now here is a huge, I know I have good enough fluxion, but there's a huge scale. And it says here that uh, this is the original scale used by Wells Fargo agents in Columbia to weigh over 1.4 million ounces of gold. The scale was so, so, so precise it could weigh a signature in, a, in pencil on a sheet of paper. This is amazing. All original. This is from the Gold Rush. <clears throat> Over there's the Fallon House, which was their opera house. Um, this is a little minor supply store, which is, has um, schools because they come here and they do it. And they have gold panning down there. You can see the people are gold panning. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Interesting thing is that, um, so, they had, um, as I told you that they had that uh, that reenactment of the of the trial and the uh, hanging and all that stuff, and it took place actually in this the original one actually took place in this area. Uh, now you see here how this is flat, and then you can see how deep it goes. So what happened is is that uh, as houses you can see here, this actually was a Donald and Parsons building. Yeah, see, and it says here, the firm of Donald and Parsons built Columbia's first brick building at the corner, at this corner in April of 1853, a general store which carried a wide range of merchandise and provisions. The building survived the big fire of 1854, but was badly damaged by a greater fire in 1857. It was again saved in 1861 when the fire described many of the nearby buildings. The structure was torn down in 1866, and then the miners here just mined the site which is why it's so deep. Uh, as soon as they tore the building down, the miners started digging for gold. So, uh, yeah. So there's the stagecoach that you can get a ride on. It's really cute. I mean, you go on the stagecoach, and then uh, they have a full, you know, robbery and everything else. Stagecoach robbery. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I mean that's basically the whole town. There's a there's a Masonic um, Masonic temple here. Um, <clears throat> that was a Masonic temple. This was Eagle Cottage at one point. Um, right now it's the uh, office for the park ranger. Um, when we originally first started coming here, um, so the Columbia they had a Columbia Gazette, which was the newspaper. And, um, yeah, see, there's Masonic Hall. But, um, yeah. So this was the, the, um, the newspaper office. And this is where Lloyd had his first bookstore. He used to be in there. <clears throat> yeah, so, this is the Fallon House. So, it's a hotel and, uh, ice cream parlor and opera theater. And that's the show that's going on. We actually saw it on uh, last Saturday. So, uh, very well done. You did a nice job. Oh, 
Yeah, so this park here, see, it says, uh, this garden is dedicated to the honor of Mrs. Geraldine McConnell, who has contributed over five decades of service to the people of California and is instrumental in the 1945 designation of Columbia as a state historic park. So, that's kind of nice. We had a beautiful fountain, but with our drought, we can't have any water running, so uh, we had to shut it off, but... Sorry. We got, a, we got a finger that's kind of uh, a nerve that's got my fingers um, almost paralyzed on my right hand, and I'm pushing the... the um, <laughs> I end up pushing the zoom button without even trying, and I don't realize it's happening until I'm looking in the viewfinder and see it go moving. But, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful little park here. It's a hers. This is the back side of the McConnell house and it's from the back street. Up here they have a little jail house. <clears throat> I'm sure it was just there's a reproduction, but uh, it's something they built, but it's kind of cute. Their little, their little jail. <laughs> Lots of graffiti. side of the firehouse. That lizard on the side of the building.
left is right. The plump tree. Plump tree. Plumps, yeah. Remember the people were picking those plumps? Alright. So here's the cemetery. Here's a little uh, stone talking about it. Which says Columbia Cemetery, founded 1855. Prior to the mining in Columbia, the public cemetery was located northeast of Main Street. In 1855, it was moved here, joining the existing Masonic and IOF cemeteries. Ordinance number 14, passed and approved in July 1st, 1857, declared the ground to be a town cemetery. Dedicated by the Golden Era Parlor. Number 99, Native Daughters of Columbia, Golden West, 24th, April 18, 1989. Whew, all right. Okay, well, here we are at the Columbia Cemetery. I said I don't know how much of it I lost when the battery went dead. Um, but anyhow, I'll try to backtrack. I'm not sure if I talked about those two graves over there, if you got that. But uh, there's some old stuff here. I mean, look at this tree. This tree has grown on this grave. It's been here since... Uh, <clears throat> It's hard to say here. Oh, 1858. 1858. Mm, these gardeners didn't live very long. <laughs> it could have been in the Gulf War, too. Mr. Rob. <laughs> born to fish. Oh, born to fish, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is this is the newer section here. As you can see. Um They've done a lot of work out here. Yeah, see, it just keeps going, even up that hill. Um, they have um, many war graves, and some of them, I think, uh, Spanish American War, um, stuff like that. So let's see here. 18. Oh, 1868. He was 60 years old. Reuben. I can't tell if that's Brainyard. B R A I N A R D. Brainyard. Wow, <clears throat> uh, there's Rebecca. Dave. 1870 to 1935. 1897 to 1975. It's amazing. There's a lot of them here that just, they're not marked anymore. The stones have been removed or like here. Uh, nothing. No name, no stone. Just a patch of weeds surrounded by fences. In here, headstones gone, footstones there with initials, but that's it. Let's see what we got here. 58 year old, born in Hollis, Holliston, Mass, died in Columbia, May 21st, 1872. He was 58 years old. <clears throat> they cut down a lot of trees in here. Let's see here. I love the 
this old section over here. It's always my favorite. Can't read that one. It's totally just about washed away. <laughs> Another one here, see? No, no markings, just a fence. Just a fence. This one here, at least, it has a name. Uh, in memory of Per Johnson, age 53. <clears throat> this one has a name, kind of Jed Jadal. Jadal is the name that's on the concrete. It's not etched in there, it's just written on there. 1840 to 1910, that's pretty good. Hmm. Let's see who this guy is. Hugh, Hugh Gillis of Fort Covington, New York, son of D. E. Gillis, D. and E. Gillis, born July 23rd, 1829, died June 14th, 1852. You know, that whole gold mining uh, life was tough. And there's some people here that, uh, wow, it says, Father died 1895, mother died 1903, and the dad died in 1974. It's kind of cool. There's a family that's uh, several, all covered up with concrete. You gotta realize that some of these gold miners were pretty wealthy <laughs> by the time they got buried, you know. It was, uh, some of them had lots and lots of money. <clears throat> so I wanna, I wanna get over here to these uh, military ones so you can kinda see it's, if you look like it, it kinda has a resemblance, you know, of um, like a section of Gettysburg uh, Cemetery or Arlington. Because uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see the stones yet, but. The, how they're all like in a row, <clears throat> and these are these are all the military, uh, older, you know, military graves from the. <sighs> we'll look at a few here, and see what we got. Sanguinetti. Uh. Okay, this guy here is, was the Mexican War. Uh, he was part of the. I can't read the number. Something U.S. Drag Dra Dragoons. Um, his last name was Hassel, H-A-S-S, -S oh, maybe Hassel, H-A-S-S-E-L. Here's another Spanish-American War, George F. Grant, Company A, 14th Inventor uh, Infantry. These are so cool, aren't they? <clears throat> Here's a fancy one for Nathaniel. And let's see here, oh, he was just a kid. Uh, 12 years and 7 months old. He died in 1892. That's a shame. Yep. <clears throat> the son of... <coughs> excuse me. W and S. F. Harding. Alright. 36th Massachusetts Infantry. Company A. Let's see here. Can't quite make that out. This one just says uh, 13th Wisconsin LA. I don't know what that means. Second Cavalry. Uh, let's see here. 5th Illinois Cavalry. It's interesting that all these people from back east ended up in the cemetery, huh? Uh, like I said, yeah, most of these are the Spanish-American War. Um, 
which is kind of cool. That one you can't read. That one there is pretty much gone. The only thing I see here is the uh, 1st California Infantry. Looks like Company C6. Company 6 or something like that. Company G of the 2nd DC Inventory Infantry. 6th California Infantry. And let's see here. All I can see is Company E. Now let's see what this one's got back here. As you can see, they've picked a lot of these up that had fallen over and replaced them, which is kind of nice. But, uh, yeah, like here's one that's, you can see they're kind of falling over. Let's see what he's got here. Spanish-American War. Walter H. Ross, Company G, 7th California Infantry. Peter Marker, Peter Marker, Company E, 1st IDA, I wonder if that's Indiana Infantry, Spanish-American War. Yep, so cool. All right, what does it say here? This is Sergeant Lawrence Cress, Company L, 30th Inventory, AEF. I don't know what that is. Captain John K. Hunter died in Columbia February 20th, 1904, aged 74 years, native of Greencastle, Indiana. So, yeah, looks like. The date on this one is like 1919, it looks like. So he probably was World War One. Uh, well, there's some pretty ones over there. Got rainbows. And this one here is in loving memory of Parsons Holiday, who portrayed Major Alpha Farnsworth in Columbia State. Historic Park from 1990 to 2014, Holiday Overland Express. Okay, that's the Columbia Schoolhouse. Um, you can actually go over there into it. You can see there's a little kid over there, but <clears throat> I don't feel like walking over there. It's kind of a steep hill. But, uh, yeah, that was the... <clears throat> schoolhouse for the kids here in Columbia. Not very big, but uh, that was it. So again, yeah, I'm not sure if I got that whole thing about um, about the two people right there. Uh, I took some photos of it though. If I haven't, if it doesn't show up on the video, I'll uh, go ahead and voice over and tell you what was that was all about. But uh, kind of an interesting story. Here's an old uh, stone over here I haven't seen and even looked at for a while. Let me see here. <clears throat> Herman, youngest son of Hans and Mary Morse. He died August 10th, 1861, aged Looks like it says one years. <laughs> kind of sad. It happens. So it's kind of a big plot. So I don't know if, if the baby's here and mom and dad are in the other half here or what. But uh, now this section over here is the Masonic, uh, Masonic part of the of the cemetery, and you can see it's a little different um, looking than the rest. <clears throat> Anyway, so that's the Columbia Cemetery. Um, yeah, good old Columbia. Anyhow, we're going to head on back now and it's time for me to take a nap. Talk to you later. They can, uh, they can keep an eye on... Uh, Is 
this was actually shot, part of it was shot here. And uh, <clears throat> Winnie Winters would, uh, would get their um, park when they did that. If they have the fire engine in there, yeah, there's the Pete. Let's see if I can get it. So this was the firehouse that uh, that housed it. So down here heading out. So that's the only scenes that were in the. Uh, yay. Doctor and Mrs. James McConnell purchased the property in 1941. Um, yeah, you can see most of the buildings were. Uh, okay. So it's there you go. As com competition for dwindling gold increased, the Chinese were eating. The Chinese immigrants to California often were forced to live in an area two blocks north of the store. Okay. A couple of years ago, I was actually part of the uh, of the cashist office, and I'll we'll take a look in a uh, drugstore, I believe. See what this is. Oh, so this was, is the cistern that they used for their water supply out of the hills. Uh, and obviously, this is gold country, so. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was telling you about. There's the. Uh, Columbia booksellers. Um, a friend of mine. This was the court. <laughs> There's a bank. This used to be a Wells Fargo Express line. And uh, so the Wells Fargo wagon used to be. 